Hey, this is Mr. Raiden. This is AP Physics Calculus Mechanics, and we're going to be going through the 2017 AP Calcu Physics Calculus exam this week. And so the first one is a forces type problem, an Atwood machine problem. And so an Atwood machine is, is when we have two masses hooked up between a pulley and one is pulling the other. And so you can see in this problem right here, we can see there is a big, a big statement in that uh, in this little paragraph that M2 is always greater than M1. So M2 is always greater than M1, which means this one is going to, M2 is going to accelerate this direction, and M1 is going to accelerate in this direction. So we have to understand that is we have M1 times gravity. That is my uh, free body diagram for that. We know M2 is going to be greater. So M2 times gravity, this force is going to be greater. Now the tensions are going to be the same. The tensions are going to be the same. Now this tension has to be bigger in order to accelerate that this block upwards and this tension is going to be smaller than the M2G but those tensions are going to be the same and so this one is worth three points A is worth three points one point for correctly drawing and labeling the vectors for the weight of the block and the tension of M1 so we have one point for M1 we get one point for drawing the free body diagram for M2 and then we get one point for saying for drawing correctly that the tension is going to be the same. So three points, one point for the tension is greater than the M1G, one point for the M2G is greater than the tension, and one point for the tensions being the same. Three points for A. Now we go to taking these values, okay, remember we had we had M1G, we had our tension there, we had our M2G and we had our tension there and so we're going to develop uh, our Newton's second law. We're going to apply Newton's second law. So let's take a look at this M1. M1 times A which is the net force is equal to the tension minus M1G and why is that true? Because the tension is what is going to be accelerating it upwards. The other Newton's second law is M2A. What's accelerating him is the M2G minus the tension. The tension is actually holding him back. And so what do I want to do? I want to, uh, they gave me the answer that we just have to get there. And so what do we have to do? We have to take one of these equations. We have to solve for tension. Let's take this first equation right here and say tension is equal to M1A plus M1G. And then we're going to plug this right in here for the second equation. So we have M2A is equal to M2G minus the tension. And the tension is minus M1A minus M1G. I just distributed that negative to everyone. We want to get our A's on the correct side, so we're going to move this over here. We have M1A plus M2A and that equals M2G minus M1G and what do I want to do? I want to factor some things out. I'm going to factor the acceleration out of here. So I have M1 plus M2. When I factor the acceleration out, I'm going to factor the G out of this one, M2 minus M1. And then I'm going to divide, and I get acceleration equals my M2 minus M1 over my M1 plus my M2. And that is my answer that I wanted to get. This is going to be worth three points where you get one point for my Newton second law for the first one, Newton second law for the second one, and then one point for your combining the equations, all of your work to get to your answer. Three points for B. Now we're going to take this acceleration equation, okay, and oh, I forgot one big thing. I forgot a big gravity here, right? Don't forget, I, I factored out that G. That G was on the numerator right there. Sorry about that. So let's go to, to letter C. So you can see, no pun intended, acceleration equals gravity times, we had M2 minus M1 over M1 plus M2. Now I hope you can see is this is in a Y equals MX plus B format. Y equals M x plus b format. And so you can see I can graph this in a linear graph. 
What's going to go on my vertical axis? What's going to go on my y-axis is acceleration. What's going to go on my x-axis is my m2 minus m1 divided by my m1 plus my m2, all of that stuff. And so what do we need to do? We can keep acceleration the same, 3.02, 1.82, 4.21, 1.15, 1.71. I need a, a row that has all of my m1 minus m2 divided by my m1 plus m2, okay? And so I'm going to take the difference of these, so 2 minus 1 is 1, divided by the total of them, which is 3, so I get 1 third. This one is the difference, which is 1, the total is 5, 1 fifth, or 0.2. The difference is 7, the total is 17, 7 seventeenths. I have, uh, the difference is 2, the total is 14, so 2 fourteenths. And the difference is 4, the total is 24, 4 over 24. Now obviously, I could, I'm going to put in the decimals for this. I'm going to put in 0 0.33333, 0 0.20. I'm going to put in 0.41. I'm going to put in 2 fourteenths is 0.14, and 4 twenty-fourths is 0.16666666666, so on and so forth. Okay, and this is what I'm going to graph. I'm going to graph my my m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2, and I'm going to graph my acceleration. So, uh, but you want to know the point total for this letter C. We get uh, one point for indicating the variables, okay, indicating the variables. So you get one point for uh, the correct answers right here, one point right here, and um, that C was only worth one point, okay? The, then we're gonna do some, some work here, okay? And so what do I wanna put on my graph right here? I wanna put acceleration. I always put the units, meters per second squared, on this, I'm going to do m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2. And whenever I graph, I'm going to take a look. Let's take a look at my accelerations. My accelerations go from the smallest one is 1.15 all the way up to 3. All the way up to 3. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3. Okay, that'll be the best I can do there. Okay. Um, that's going to be, oh wait, it goes up to 4, 4.21, so there's going to be a 4 as well. Uh, they're going to give me a good graph there. Now when I take a look at my uh, my m1 minus, or m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2, uh, the smallest one is 0.14, the biggest one is 0.41, so I'm going to go in 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, okay? and let's try to do my values. So at 0.33, I have 3.02. 0 0.33, which is about right here, 3.02. Remember, it doesn't have to be exact. At 0 0.20, I get 1.82. 0 0.20, 1.82, that's pretty good. At 0.41, I get 4.21, 0.41, 4.21. It's not bad. I have 0 0.14, 1 1.15, 0 0.14, 1.15. I have 0 0.166 and 1.71. 0 0.166, 0 0.1.71, 0 0.1.71. Not bad. And I'm going to do my best line fit. My best line fit. I'm just going to do a red line there. And my best line fit through my data is looking about about like that. So not bad at all, not bad at all. And then then I'm using my straight line. Um, oh, let me tell you how D is gonna be graded. Uh, one point for using more than half the grid and correctly labeling your axes. So correctly label your axes, using more than one half the grid, they gave you one point. You don't want to just use, you don't want to have your line be like this and not use the entire grid right there, okay? Uh, you're going to plot your data correctly. Plotting your data is going to be worth one point, okay? And then drawing a best fit line consistent with the data, one point. So three points, 
for D. Three points for D. Then we want to find the slope. Okay, We want to find the slope. So we want two points that are as good as we can do, as good as we can do, uh, that match up on my graph. And so you can see right here where, where, where's going to be some good points. Um, this one, this one it is going to be, let's see, let's try to tweak this just a smidge. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, so let's take a look at two different points. Uh, this point right here, I kind of like that. That's at 0.4 and 4. And what's another point that maybe runs in right here, right here? That's at uh, 0.22 and 2. So you can see my rise is going to be 4 minus 2. Uh, that's my rise right there. there. My run is going to be from 0.22 all the way to 0 0.4, 0 0.4 minus 0.22. And when I put that in a calculator, um, I know what it is. I graphed it out using my graphing calculator. Uh, you can do it uh, roughly the same way. I end up getting about 11.1 if for meters per second squared for my slope my slope. Um, if I use a linear regression on a calculator, I think my calculator ended up getting 10.5 meters per second squared. Okay. Now obviously there's a little bit of wiggle room there. Uh, you're going to uh, use the best fit line. That's going to be worth one point. Do not just use your data points. Do not just use your data points. Use your best fit line. And then you get one point for calculating the slope. Okay, correctly relating that slope to the acceleration of gravity. Uh, why is the slope equal to the acceleration of gravity? Well, if we come back here, you can see right here, the, the slope is going to be equal to the acceleration of gravity right here. Okay, And so, uh, remember, if that constant has any other things in it, you got to do a little bit of algebra to solve for whatever, const uh, whatever constant you want, like gravity. Or something like that. Okay, two points. Then we go to one last part of this problem. We change this Atwood machine to this. Uh, there's one big thing. It's a smooth horizontal table, which means there we're assuming there's zero friction. And take a look right here. This, uh, if we take a look at our free body diagram, there's only one thing that's accelerating this guy. It's tension. There's no friction working against it. So we have m1a is equal to tension. Now this one is going to have M2G and tension is going to be the same, right? Same string, same tension. Okay. Remember, if you're actually doing a rotational problem where this pulley is coming into play, the tensions are going to be different. We're going to call one T1, we're going to call one T2, and we're just going to work on the torque of the pulley. But in this case, we are not worrying about the pulley. The pulley is not coming into play in this problem. We're not doing a torque problem. Um, if we we're doing a torque problem, you would have to do the torque equals I alpha equals uh, the tension times the radius coming one way minus the tension times the radius going the other way. But in this case, we're just saying M2A is equal to M2G minus the tension, which means when I put these two equations together, we have M2A, M2A equals M2G minus M1A which means when I add these guys over this side, we have acceleration times M1 plus M2 is equal to M2G. This looks very similar to our problem before. The acceleration is equal to G times M2 over M1 plus M2. How did it differ from our problem before? Well, look at the numerator. The numerator is just M2, not M2 minus M1. So the numerator is going to be bigger. If the numerator is bigger, if the numerator is bigger, there's going to be more acceleration. It's going to accelerate at a greater rate. Okay? Why? Because there's less holding it back. There isn't the M1 holding it back. But they asked, what's going to happen to the tension in the string? Well, if it's going to accelerate at a greater rate, um, if you take a look at this first equation, this first equation was 
m1 times a equals the tension. What was our equation before for the tension? Let's come back. We have the tension was equal to m1a plus m1g. The tension before was equal to m1a plus m, sorry, m1g, right, m1g. There was greater tension because it wasn't just the acceleration, it was the acceleration times th that inertia plus the inertial forces of gravity against it. So what's going to happen to the tension in this string? The tension is going to become lower. The tension must decrease. That's going to be worth two points. Uh, one point for uh, discussing something about the acceleration of blocks. Uh, one thing, one point for discussing the something about the forces of the blocks with saying it's lower. If you put higher, you don't get two points at all. Okay, so you get two points for that. And last but not least, one last problem is problem G. It says the value determined for the acceleration of gravity is lower than in the first experiment. Well, what was not coming into play in the first experiment? The table was not coming into play in the first experiment. The table was the big physical factor that is happening in the second experiment, which means there must be friction involved in the table. And so that is going to be 1.4 G. And that's our problem number one. You can see uh, number 1A was worth three points. Three points for B, that's six. One point for C, that's seven. Uh, three points for D, that's 10. Two more points for E, that's 12. Uh, one more point for, sorry, two points for F, that's 14, and one more point for G, that's 15 points. Make sure you give me your points of how you did. This is the 2017 AP Physics C Mechanics Exam, problem number one. See you guys.